Monday report with Trevor Ombija, Dr. Lois Ombaja, who's the head of the Infectious Diseases Unit in the country, alarmingly announced that the ICU units at the Kenyatta National Hospital were full. There's also been concern about the capacity in private hospitals, especially as the cases of COVID-19 continue to spike in the country. But just what is an ICU unit? Please watch my explainer tonight. The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country has brought into sharp focus the country's ICU capacity. With just over 500 ICU units in the entire country in both public and private institutions in the country, the issue of critical care in the country has become critical. We are here today at the Kenyatta University Teaching Referral and Research Hospital to show you just what it entails to set up one ICU unit, how many personnel are required, and indeed, what is the criteria that sends one into ICU care. This hospital has 24 ICU units, and they have agreed to show us just one of those units. Dr. Isaac Adembesa, who's the head of the Anesthesia and Critical Care Department, will show us one. Let's go. This hospital admitted its first COVID-19 patient on the 4th of April and has treated and cared for about 1,100 patients to date. At this moment, they have 300 COVID-19 patients with 10 in the intensive care unit. They, just like other hospitals around the country, have to carefully share their resources between the COVID and non-COVID patients. To increase their capacity, they have converted their high dependency unit into an ICU. <laughs> but what exactly is an intensive care unit? An ICU unit uh, consists of what you hear people commonly say, an ICU bed. Mm -hmm. And an ICU bed consists of a bed that you can see here, there is a ventilator, and then there is what we call a cardiac monitor for monitoring the patient's heart and the blood pressure and their saturation. And then we have also pumps. So we have infusion pumps for giving medication and we have a feeding pump for giving food to the patient because most of these patients are not able to feed on their own. So they have a feeding tube. So you need to find a way to feed them. That's why a feeding pump is very important. And then because they are critically ill patient, you need what we call a resuscitation crash cut, which is made up of a defibrillator. You can see here, this is an ambu bag. In the event that the ventilator is not working well or you want to confirm your, the placement of your breathing tube, you can use this bag. It's called an ambu bag. And then all these trolleys here have medication, resuscitation medication. So it's always fully equipped and the nurses always check it on a daily basis to make sure that it has all the resuscitation drugs. The ICU is labor intensive. The multifaceted team here gives special dedicated care to each patient. So first of all, you have um, an ICU trained nurse who have a bit of more training. Actually, they are, they are more qualified than a general nurse. We call them critical care nurses. Then um, the recommendations worldwide is for every one ICU patient, you must have one critical care nurse taking care of the patient. And then in addition to the nurse, you, you, you have a specially trained uh, doctor physician, either an anesthesiologist or they can be internal medicine physicians, but who have further training in critical care medicine. And even nowadays we have surgeons who go for further training in critical care medicine. In addition, uh, these people need to be supported by medical officers because the care of the patient is on a 24-7 basis. So the patient has to be monitored throughout. So we usually have medical officers as well who are stationed in ICU. And then uh, we have physiotherapists because these patients can't move. Uh, they need somebody to mobilize them so that they don't form clots. We have nutritionists to take care of their nutritional needs. And then there are other support uh, staffs, you know, housekeeping, um, other physicians like radiologists and, and, and also the laboratory, which is, which is very key to an operation of an ICU. Everyone who works in the ICU requires specialized training that takes anywhere between five to ten years. For the doctors, um, first of all, you must be um, a trained specialist, meaning uh, you're either a physician or an anesthesiologist. And, and, and to get there, is there's undergraduate training 
as a general practitioner, uh -huh. then you do your one year in, uh, internship, then you either go for a four year training in anesthesiology or four year training in, an, in internal medicine. Then after that, there is an additional one to two year training in critical care medicine. So to train um, a critical care specialist, you need, we're talking about 11 to 12 years of training. And just when is one sent to the ICU? The main indication for ICU admission is if one or more of your main organs are failing. And when you talk about your organs, you're talking from the brain, the heart, the kidneys or the liver. So, for example, if somebody has an overwhelming infection, what we call sepsis, they end up going into multiple organ failure and we need to support those organs. So important are ICUs that the Nairobi Metropolitan Services recently announced that it will set up two such facilities in the county. And if they go ahead with the plan, here is what their budget would look like. The special ICU bed goes for half a million shillings. The ventilator is between four and five million. The cardiac monitor is at three to four million shillings. The defibrillator is an average two million to three million shillings. The drug infusion pump can cost up to 200,000 Kenya shillings, while the feeding pump that is used to intravenously feed the patient will set one back 100,000 Kenya shillings. The total cost of the equipment alone comes to a conservative figure of 10 million shillings to set up just one intensive care unit. But this is only the cost of putting up the structure. The hospital will still need disposables like feeding tubes, catheters, injections, drugs, the IV cannula, most of which are changed on a daily basis. This does not even take into account the cost of protective equipment donned by the specialists as they come in to monitor and treat the patient. A normal day it costs in a public facility between 30 to, to 50,000 Kenyan shillings to keep a patient, an ICU patient, uh, per day. But in the private hospitals we are talking of uh, anywhere between 100 to 150,000 shillings per day. That cost, together with a shortage of trained personnel, explains why only a few hospitals can afford to have ICUs. A reason why keeping the COVID-19 numbers low will need to be a priority to ensure that only a manageable number of patients end up in the ICU.